Okay, so let's suppose we have a uh, function here, uh, f of t, and a of x uh, is equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. So um, this is the area collecting function, notice starting at 0 and then going up to uh, whatever x is. And so let's find um, the first part is find a of 3. And so this one's easy because all you have to do is uh, plug in 3 into x. And so that means that we're looking for the integral from 0 to 3 of f of t dt. Okay, now this is equal to the area underneath f of t from 0 to 3. So if you go from here to here, 1, 2, 3 the height is 5 so this is just going to be 15 over 2 base times height over 2 it's a triangle right okay now to find the derivative of that function at 3 we have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus which basically says okay well the derivative at 3 is equal to f of 3. So basically the value of this function evaluated at the x value. And so that one is even easier. That's just at 3 f of little f of t is equal to 5. Okay. And now what we want to do is try to figure out a, a way to graph uh, x's. So Okay, so I'm just going to draw a rough sketch over here. Now, this is going to be a graph of uh, a of x, the area collecting function. Now, just think about this for a second. What is going to be the general shape of a of x? Well, notice that as you go from 0 along here, you're always, always going to be collecting area. And so um, this one is going to be always increasing, right? So that's just kind of a little note. To self. Okay, so we know that at 3, the value is 15 halves. I'm going to just label this 15 halves. Okay, and then at x equals to 5, if I find the area from here to here, why don't I just kind of make that into those two little shapes. So this is going to be, this one has an area of 4, and this one has an area of 2 times 3, which is 6 over 2, so that's 3. So this area right here is um, 7, so that means that I'm going to go from here to here, from 3 to 5, so this is 3, it's 15 halves, or uh, 7.5. I'm going to go another uh, 7. So we'll call that 14.5. And so we go from here to here in this way, and then from here to here. Now it's hard to kind of tell because my uh, axis is off. But, you know, it's going from here to here. It goes in a different, at a different rate than from here to here. Not a big difference, but a little bit. Okay, and then uh, from 5 to 8, that's 1, 2, 3. So that's 6. So from 5, 6, 6, 7, 8 you'd go up another 5, so that's going to be 19.5. And so, you know, roughly, that's kind of what it looks like, sort of, of course. Um, and this might be a little curvy, but that's good enough, just a rough sketch. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting problem. We have a uh, function... Um, 
y equals to the integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 plus t plus t squared. And it's asking to find where is it concave up. Now that's just bananas. I mean, what, did, what does this have to do with the uh, concavity stuff? But really, I mean, this is just like any other function, right? And so to find the, um, where it's concave up, well, you just follow the normal rules you uh, would otherwise. You would find your uh, pips, and then uh, you do your number line thing. Number line, sorry. Okay. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you know what to do. So the first thing we do is we have to find the uh, second derivative. So to find the second derivative, well, I have to find the first derivative. So the first derivative of this function, I just use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, which just says, so I'm going from a constant to x, just plug it in. So this is just 1 over 1 plus x plus x squared. Okay, so then the second derivative is just the derivative of this one, which means I need to use the, uh, the quotient rule. So, okay, well then I would have the derivative of the top, which is 0, times 1 plus x plus x squared minus 1 times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1 plus 2x, all over 1 plus x plus x squared is equal to 0. OK, and then I find my, my pips. Pips. Beep, beep. OK, so um, this whole part right there is equal to 0 do it with blue. And so then I have negative 1 plus, um, well, negative 1 minus 2x, right? And so um, that's going to be um, x is equal to negative 1 half. So that's what I get from this one for a pip. Now for the bottom, um, this one, there is no solution to this one. So I'm not going to worry about it. So this is my only pip, my one and only pip. OK, so now got my number line, negative 1 half. And I'll test some points. How about negative 2 and uh, 4? No, how about 0? It's much easier to do 0. OK. All right. So I'm going to plug it into the second derivative. Now, let me simplify this a little bit. So y double prime is equal to negative 1 minus 2x. <gasps> oh my goodness. I totally forgot the squared down here. Sorry. When I did the quotient rule. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But I caught my mistake, so that's okay. All right. Over 1 plus x plus x squared. Squared. Almost forgot it again. Okay. So then... Um, y double prime at negative 2 is equal to negative 1 minus negative 2 minus 2 times negative 2 over the bottom. I don't even care what it is because I know it's going to be positive because it's squared. And so this is equal to negative 1 plus 4, which is positive, which means it is concave up. OK, and then I plug in 0, and I get negative over positive. And so trying to get the right color here. Negative, which means it's concave down. And so then what I'm looking for, the interval, what the question is asking for is where is it concave up? So that would be right here. So it's concave up on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1 half. And that's it.